Welcome to the Simply Luxurious Kitchen. This season is all about comfort. With many French comfort recipes made in my own home kitchen, inspired by what I find in my garden, and kept company by my two furry companions, Join me as I share seasonal fare to elevate the everyday meal. And most importantly, discover how to enjoy stepping into your kitchen. Let's get started. Welcome to my kitchen. I'm Shannon Abels and this is a Simply Luxurious Kitchen. Today, we're gonna make pan-seared scallops with sherry wine sauce. It is a wonderfully flavorful, simple dish to make that will make coming home at the end of the day just for yourself or someone special or someone you know who loves really good seafood, they are going to enjoy it and so are you. Now, we may be wondering what all these flowers are for. Well, this is for our everyday luxury that I'll be talking about at the end of today's episode, so stay tuned for that. But now, we're going to get started making this dish. I've got the pasta going, which you can absolutely make this with pasta, but you do not have to. You can make it with any pasta you want. We'll talk about why I chose the pasta that I did. Um, but that's going because this dish goes that fast. Let's get started. So before we get to the stove, I actually want to prepare the scallops over here. So this dish calls for four to six scallops, sea scallops. And as soon as you buy them from the store, um, you're going to want to just go right home and make them because these lovely things are just, oh, look how large they are. But you're going to want to pat each of them dry. So make sure you do that before you season them. And this is going to ensure that the searing happens effectively, giving it that nice brown caramelized finish on the edges. So we're going to dry these off. Uh, and then... Now this could serve two people, or this would be a wonderful um, one dinner one night, lunch the next day. Um, I usually eat three um, with my dishes, um, so it's up to you. All right, so now, let me get that away for a second. Let's season these. And you just wanna season them with salt and pepper. Florida salt on one side, and you'll season the other side once they go in the pan. But you're just gonna season one side first, okay? And then I like to lay this down because it keeps it from getting any moisture that maybe may have rested on that plate. Soaks that up, you put them here, and they are all ready to go and get ready for cooking. So let's go do that. Seafood is one of my favorite comfort foods that's simple to make and that is kind of special because we don't get as much fresh seafood here in Bend as I would love, um, but we do get it from time to time. And when our a local um, fishmonger, um, I walk by and I'll check the counter and I'll see the signs, you know, fresh, not frozen, and we're just arrived today from Oregon or, or wherever, or the crabs in um, and all the months that have ours in them. Um, I definitely look at my budget and go, can I do this? Because they are, um, so good to have when they're fresh, which means when I do get to go to the ocean, which is some of the our favorite vacation spots, the boys and I, Norman's over here, uh, and Oscar, um, before we even check in to our our um, vacation spot, we stop at the local fishmonger in that seaside town and pick up our favorites um, that are available and just have a really good couple of days cooking um, seafood and walking on the beach. So yes, this sea scallops recipe is simple and um, it is perfect for one, that treat that you give yourself in the middle of the week or the end of the week or the end of the weekend, so therefore any time, or with someone that you wanna share a great seafood meal with. Um, but because it's so simple um, and it adds that 
decadent flavor um, in the sauce that we'll talk about. This is definitely a comfort recipe. Isn't it awesome? Yeah. My dogs are eating treats over here. All right, so we have the pan at medium high heat. We're going to put these in here in a second, but first, instead of olive oil, what we're gonna do is actually use butter. So we want about a tablespoon of butter once that pan is hot, yep. Ooh, there we go. All right, starting to melt, perfect. All right, so the butter, ooh, <laughs> hear that sizzle, that's perfect. So again, medium high heat, these have been patted dry, the scallops, and we're gonna put the seasoned side down, and we're not gonna touch them for three minutes because we want them to hold that place so they get nice and caramelized and seared. So just three minutes on this first sign. Make sure they're spaced out. So I have about a 10 inch pan here and I can put six of those in here. So while it's cooking on one side, whoop, that butter's a popping. Season it on this side now. Perfect. Salt and pepper. Swirl that butter around so it gets to all of the scallops. The scallops aren't gonna move, but what you're doing is making sure that that searing happens so that caramelization happens um, to make that brown, buttery, caramelized edge. So yummy. And you can kind of watch the butter that's in the pan around the scallops. And as it starts to turn kind of brown, you're thinking about maybe starting to flip this. But you still do want it to get a little bit brown around the edges. You don't want a light colored, light brown scallop. Okay, in here, almost ready. And you really don't wanna go off and do something else because you don't wanna overcook scallops. They go so fast, very much like shrimp. All right, so these, oh, they're looking good. So I'm gonna move that butter around a little bit more. I'm not, the scallops are sticking. They are stuck right where they wanna be. Okay, now I'm gonna flip them. Keep as much of that lovely brown sauce. Oh, look at that, look at that. Oh, yes. I'm gonna add more butter for the second side, just so it also has a chance to get lovely. Oh my gosh, these are looking so good. Beautiful, check these out, wow. So I'm gonna prepare the pan, but you wanna stay right here because that second side, you're gonna cook for one to two minutes, whereas the first side was three minutes. Oscar's right here. You don't want them to get entirely opaque, just, just opaque, because they will continue to cook a little bit as you um, let them rest, because you're gonna let them rest. Oscar comes out of, um, of the bedroom from his naps when he smells food, and so the tap dancing you're hearing is Oscar. So, all right, this is getting really close to done. Let me show you what it looks like. Okay, so they are nearly opaque, but not entirely. This big one here, I'm looking at it going, hmm, you might need a little more time. But the rest are basically done. And again, they are gonna keep cooking through. So we're gonna put them off here. I'm gonna let that middle one cook a little bit more while I take these rest of them out. And you're gonna think, they're not done, Shannon. They're not done. Oh, trust me, they are. They do not need to cook that long and they will continue to cook while they're resting and as you're making the sauce. You want that scallop to just fall apart when you cut into it and not be rubbery. And, and there's a significant difference in the whole entire experience of that meal when you get it right. I've got it wrong a few times. So now we're gonna make the sauce, but because we wanna keep the lovely renderings in here and it's gonna take a moment to chop up the shallots, take the pan off the heat, turn off the burner and just set it on a different burner that's off Grab one shallot. Oh, I have to show you this shallot. I got this shallot. It was one big hunking thing at the market this last week. And it was just, it just, they were so beautiful. So part of the reason I'm drawn to food is it just looks amazing. But we're gonna put one of these in the sauce because it's amazing looking. Let me get my knife. So we're gonna finally slice up a shallot. So shallots versus onions. If you have an onion and you don't have a shallot, Go ahead and use the onion, that's completely fine. Um, what the shallot has is a little softer, finer, more refined, I guess you could say, flavor than the onion. And um, I like it for sauces, because it is traditional in um, your Bert Blanc sauce, um, your classic French, well I can't get that off, it's so fresh. There we go. <laughs> um, but it is typically your, um, 
your aromatic in your Berblanc sauce. And we're making a sherry wine sauce, which is a deviation of a wine and herb sauce. So we're gonna slice this up. We have our celery seed, and then we'll get started to make the sauce. All right, so before you put the pan back on, you've got your shallots chopped up, put them in the pan. The pan might still be hot and that is perfect. That is actually good. If it's not, which mine is not, put it right back on. You're eventually gonna put it on anyway and put it to medium heat, okay? Now we're also gonna put some celery seed, a pinch of celery seed. We'll see it comes right back on. There we go, perfect. A little more of a pinch, okay? put some butter in there. I love putting butter in my sauce. It's just a good, a good flavor component and it also gets those shallots to brown up a little bit quicker. There we are. Perfect. So to make the sauce, we have our shallots. We have them in the same pan, the same pan that we had our scallops. We have the celery seed. And this is all over medium heat. Oh, it's a little hot. So it's all over medium heat, just for about a minute or two. And then what we're gonna add here in a second are three tablespoons of sherry wine. Now this is a sherry wine that I highly recommend you go into your wine shop and getting. Okay, so to make our sauce, we put in our shallot, we put in celery seeds. We're gonna cook that over medium heat for about a minute or two. And then we're gonna add three tablespoons of sherry wine. Now sherry wine, this is the one that I would highly recommend. In fact, when I went to the wine shop here locally, I said, I need some sherry wine for cooking. And the Susie, the wine um, expert at our shop, she said, ah, you want a monta <laughs> you want a Montelato? And I said, okay, <laughs> um, but she was right. And this is actually something you can enjoy as an aperitif. You can pair it with cheese. You can pair it um, with anything you would enjoy as an aperitif, so nuts because it has a nutty hazelnut flavor. It comes from the Montilla region in Spain, which is in the southern part of Spain, um, just um, northwest of Granada. And um, you're gonna put three tablespoons in here, but this is what makes the flavor. The sherry wine makes the flavor. So we're gonna put three tablespoons in there, okay? And this just keeps in your fridge. One, two, three. This just keeps in your fridge. You can have it in there for three or four months. And then you want one tablespoon of sherry vinegar. Okay. Now I want to reduce this down by half before I put my last piece in, which is the cream. So just let it simmer up medium heat till half the liquid you're looking at initially is reduced. Then we'll add the cream. It's starting to smell really good too. It's very subtle. There is an aromatic flavor here, a bit herby, but earthy. Some would even describe it a bit dark tobacco-y. Um, but yeah, you definitely get a nutty flavor when you taste it. And um, that's really, it's, it's a medium, um, medium in color. It's not real light, it's not real dark in color. And they use a dual aging process for it. Um, but again, I highly recommend having that bottle for your cooking. Um, and then give it a sip and see if it is something you want for a pair of teeth. Okay, this is half reduced, so let's add the cream. So we're using heavy whipping cream and we're only gonna add two tablespoons. You don't need that much. So you know, you say you're cooking with cream. Oh my gosh, two tablespoons. It's adding flavor, it's adding base, it's adding fat. And that's what gives you flavor. So it's gonna cool off initially. It's, not, it's gonna stop boiling because you're not hearing it right now because the, the, the whipping cream cooled it down. It's gonna warm itself back up again, okay? And when it does, you're gonna keep cooking it until it gets to the thickness that you want. Um, I like it to be able to cover my spoon, but still at the same time not stick to it, so you don't want it just cooked all the way through. Um, but you want it to be basically opaque on your spoon and just running off um, very gradually. Oh, it smells so good in here. Yeah. This is about what I want. So if I can put my spoon in, shake out the shallots, it's still covering the spoon. <laughs> it's really good. But at the same time, I can somewhat see the spoon there, but there's, it's not a perfect brown. This is good, this is good. Okay, so I'm gonna turn this off. I'm gonna get my dishes. We're gonna dish up. Okay, 
So I've got some chives here. I just went out to the garden and grabbed those. Have my pasta. And I want to talk about these, this pasta for a second. So you can use any pasta you have. What I have found with this recipe, with this sauce, is I want it to be soaked up. And the shallots, excuse me, the scallops are going to be, you know, bite sized when I cut them up. And so I wanted pasta that was similar in size as the bites of um, scallops I was going to have. And I also want rough edges. This one has little ruffles on the end of the edges of it because then it will hold more sauce, hold some shallots in there, hold that flavor so that I have shallots and flavor and shells and mm. but you can actually put it over angel hair or linguine or whatever you want. But this has a little salt in the water. Don't forget to salt your water when you do pasta. It makes a tremendous difference in the entire composition of the film or the meal. Okay, so now what you do, your own pasta, however much or however little you want. I'm hungry. Are you hungry, Aunt? Now the sauce. Yum. And you really do have sauce about just for two scallop dishes or scallop, scallop servings. Okay. Excuse my fingers, but I'm eating this. Oh, look at how brown that looks. So good. Yes. Okay. Now, pasta looks really good. Chop up your chives. I'm just going to sprinkle them on top and it does make a difference. Those little touches, the herbs, especially those fresh herbs, makes a difference. We're going to sprinkle it on. Yeah, look at that. Yum. And there you have it. Pan seared scallops with sherry wine sauce. We had that done in 20 minutes. So simple full of flavor and fresh from the ocean. Let's have a bite. Ready yeah. up? Here we go. Oh. Mm. Get some sauce, get some pasta. This might be a big bite. Here we go. Mmm. Mmm. Mm. The salad is cooked exactly as you want it to be cooked. <laughs> It is just tender in the middle. It's definitely slightly crispy on the edges. So I got that caramelization and that sauce. Mmm. Let's just go in again. Get another bite here. Yum. The seasoning makes a difference on the scallops. You might think just a little salt and pepper don't make a difference. It does. So don't forget to do that. Freshly ground pepper. I highly recommend it. Um, and then you have that, again, that nuttiness and it's subtle but it adds a depth to the sauce. It's just fantastic. And you don't even really know there's much cream in here, except for it adds that thickness, it adds a substance, that base, and it adds a little bit of fat. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so pan sear scallops with sherry wine sauce. Have it tonight on your own and enjoy luxurious, scrumptious, fresh seafood. And it only takes 20 minutes, so good. What a comfort. So this week's everyday luxury is simply having bouquets of flowers in the home. I try to have fresh flowers at all times in the house, um, but I usually just go shopping once a week. If if the shops are available. As we know, during this time um, of quarantine or staying home um, during the pandemic, a lot of stores, it just wasn't as, as available. So that's when I like to go out in my garden. But recently, because it's fall, um, I went to Trader Joe's and I got some dahlias and I got some gladiolas. Um, I have fallen in love with gladiolas and I like to work with them first. So let's take a look at these. So gladiolas are probably something I will never have in my garden, um, but I sure love the dramatic effect. And this is the other thing. They last for a really long time. 
you just have to keep changing the water. We'll talk about that. And then any of the buds that are done, you just pop them out. They're kind of fun. You just pop them out and it keeps growing and growing and growing. Um, so that's why I like gladiolas. So I've got a vase that works well for them because they're going to kind of splay out. Um, I filled it with lukewarm water and I put some flower food in there. Now there are some natural um, flower foods you can put in. You can simply put sugar, a little bit of vinegar. That works just as fine. Uh, but I have these that come with these bouquets all the time and I just keep collecting them. And then I just add half a packet usually. And before you put anything in that water, you want to end basically just chip the ends off here and then you'll place them in there one at a time. So I love just to take my time with this and I love the counter here. It's kind of conducive to that. So I'll lay everything out, kind of make a mess, but then the outcome is you have these beautiful bouquets that are so simple. So I have purple today because that was what was available. These are only like $5 a bundle. So that's a $10 bouquet right here. But I recently purchased green gladiolas and you wouldn't think just looking in the store that green gladiolas would make much of a statement. Oh, but they did. Remember contrast, where are you going to put the bouquet? So as you can see here in this picture, I put it on my dining room table and the contrast with my white chandelier just lit up the room and it's such a dramatic statement and all it is, is a bunch of gladiolas. So let's get these ones in the vase. and take off any loose leaves that are gonna fall off naturally because you've trimmed the base a little bit shorter. And you're just going to go around, whoops, <laughs> go around. They're just sometimes really funky shapes too. There we go. And make sure you trim the end. As you go and take out some of these leaves that just kind of look wonky um, that just lets you see where you have gaps if you want gaps then that's great too it, it doesn't really matter it's your I mean it does matter to you but it doesn't matter to anyone else so just do it the way you like to see it there's a big gap there that I want to fill with this last one and by the time I'm done with this <laughs> my floor has leaves everywhere um, and everything so there you go your gladiola. Get that rid of that leaf. There we go. Arrangement. And it, you know, it looks, wow, that's too much, but no, it's all you need on a table, on a foyer, on an entryway, anywhere where you just want people's eyes to be drawn. All right, so let's do the dahlias now. For the dahlias, as we know, they're coming into to bloom right now, this fall, the end of summer, beginning of fall season. They're just fantastic. I don't grow these in my flower garden. Um, I don't have much of a flower garden. I just have flowers uh, dispersed everywhere in my <laughs> boulevard. But I don't um, remove the tubers and put them back in. So this is one flower that I do get at Trader Joe's if it's, if it's available. Again, I got three bouquets this time um, because they were about $4 each. And I just wanted to show you something you can do. So I, I do like sometimes doing all the same color. I think that makes an amazingly gorgeous statement. But you know, sometimes just getting the similar hues or in a similar family of the similar undertones can just make, wow, quite a difference because it adds a lot of depth. So that's what we're gonna do. All right, so I'll put this over here. Put water or food in the water. Again, lukewarm water. And we'll just kind of cut it not short enough because we're probably going to cut more just to see how short we want to cut it. Okay. All right. But what I like to do here now is get rid of the unnecessary leaves because if the leaves are in the water, they're just going to get the water dirty and they're going to kind of turn moldy and gross. So now I'm just going to go through and get rid of any leaves that are likely going to be in the water. So now 
what I want to do, and you do want to be gentle with these because those heads, those lovely heads can just pop right off. Kind of put them in an arrangement of color combinations where they're all mixed up the way you want them. Just like you're putting together a bouquet. <laughs> Yeah, let's get another orange one in there. Yeah, the, the, the subtly different colors just make each of the colors, I think, pop even more. Let's see, there we go. Put a bud in there. Now, these are gonna go in at angles like this, so you don't wanna chop it too short, but I do wanna get some of this off. And then, I play around. See how they kind of held each other there um, together? You don't really need um, a frog. I'll show you what a frog is. For some arrangements, you will need a frog to hold things in place, these little nice, steely, sharp things that you can stick the stem in. But you don't need one if you have enough flowers. And as you saw, it wasn't a ton of flowers, but it was more than one bundle. Um, but they hold each other in. And that, just reminds me of fall. So, simple everyday luxury. Bring in some fresh, fresh flowers. If you can find them cheaply like I do at Trader Joe's or pull them out of your garden, they really do lift the mood, don't they? Anyway, so I hope you enjoyed this idea and uh, we'll be back next week with another one.